Hi, welcome to a new episode of History in 7 Facts. In this show we'll explore interesting and intriguing episodes from humanity's past, from the ancient times all the way to the modern era. Everybody wants to be a king, but is it really something you want? Throughout history, every time someone sat in a throne, someone else was trying to take it for themselves. Let's take a look at what it really meant to wear the crown of England. When kings and queens die, their offsprings are not necessarily the next in line of succession. Since the Middle Ages, England's crown changed hands several times. HBO's show Game of Thrones is probably one of the most popular shows of our generation. It's often brutal and full of conspiracies, but reality is often much harder. For many royal subjects, even today the monarchy represents a source of stability and tradition. For them, the story of the English crown is just a succession of kings and queens, and many don't realize that these kings were often members of different families. In reality though, even in the modern age, an inadequate king can be removed from the throne. And in the past, when monarchs had a lot more power, it was even more important and tempting to replace kings that were deemed unfit to rule. Thus, most of the crucial moments in England's history were in fact the bloody wars waged for its crown. In the Middle Ages, bloody confrontations for the throne were quite common. In the 9th century, Alfred the Great disinherited his brother's son and took over as King of Wessex. Less than 100 years later, in 1066, Edward the Confessor was to be the last king from the House of Wessex. When he died, he left no successors, and it took three major battles at Fulford Gate, Stamford Bridge and Hastings to decide that the next king was to be William I, a distant relative of Edward from Normandy. Of course, I'm oversimplifying history here, and you should definitely read more about this fascinating subject, but I hope you understand where I'm getting at. Foreign rulers also mingled with the line of succession, even in modern times. In the 17th century, Prince William III of Orange from Netherlands was convinced by the English Parliament to initiate a revolt against his own father-in-law, King James III. This was known as the Glorious Revolution and instated William as the new King of England, which led to the adoption of the English Bill of Rights. Even Queen Victoria had pure German origins. Her mother was Princess Victoria of Leiningen, and her father was Prince Edward, who was also from a German house, the Hanover. In fact, all of her life, Victoria spoke with a German accent. So as you can see, nothing is what it seems to be. Among the royal conflicts of England, the history of one family stands out. Its members waged wars and used diplomacy and conspiracies, all to get their hands on the throne. Cousins and siblings that were far down the succession line focused their attention on making and breaking alliances. Their mothers constructed intricate plots just to undermine other branches of the family. They murdered each other until they were so few that choosing the next king became very simple. They were the house of Plantagenet, originating from the lands of Anjou in France, and they brought about the Wars of the Roses. They were descended from Henry II of England, who in turn followed the Normans to rule England. The members of the powerful Plantagenet house ruled until the 15th century, but in the end even they fell. Their successors were the Tudors. So how did the Plantagenets lose the crown? By fighting among themselves. In 1399, Henry Bolingbroke became King Henry IV after his cousin Richard II died. He was part of the House of Lancaster. His son and grandson followed him on the throne, but as the years went by, the powerful nobleman of Lancaster engaged in a succession war with the rival house of York. The irony? 
Both the Lancasters and the Yorks were branches of the Plantagenets. They were relatives. During this 33-year-long War of the Roses, two kings and three heirs died, many pretenders were murdered and 13 battles were fought. The two houses were represented by a red and white rose, hence the name of the war. Eventually, the House of Lancaster was defeated and in 1461, Edward of the House of York became Edward IV. At the age of 40 though, he unexpectedly died and his son at the age of 13 was crowned as the new king. His uncle, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, was to be his protector, but he betrayed him, accusing him of being a bastard and locked him in the Tower of London. The young king and his brother soon disappeared and Richard became king. This was the move that ended the Plantagenets and opened up the throne to the Tudors. Up until this moment, Henry Tudor lived in obscurity in Brittany, but now he dared to claim the throne of England. His claim was weak, he was a distant relative of Edward III, who ruled England over 100 years ago. But his father, Owen Tudor, was the Welsh courtier who married the widow of Henry V of House Lancaster. Using his relations and the power of his father-in-law, Thomas Stanley, a very powerful nobleman and the King of Man, he gathered a French army and defeated and killed Richard III, thus ending the royal dynasty of the Plantagenet. The last Plantagenet was Edward of Warwick, imprisoned by Henry Tudor. His death was appropriate to his family's legacy. He was decapitated after he was suspected of plotting a coup d'etat. This was only a part of England's royal history. The throne changed hands many, many times and bloody conflicts, often between members of the same family, were common. These conflicts were sometimes so intense that they actually destroyed the noble houses involved. Arranged marriages were also very, very common, and more often than not, the children of powerful noblemen were nothing more than pawns, used to forge alliances and get closer to the crown. So you see, HBO's Game of Thrones might sound violent and bloody, but in reality, the fight for the crown was far more violent and complicated. I don't know about you, but I would definitely not want to be a king. Thank you for watching this episode of 7 Fact. I hope this was interesting and informative, and maybe it even inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked this video, please thumbs up and subscribe. While you're downstairs, let me know what you think about this video. Please consider visiting my Patreon page and become a patron. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.